वेलकम फ्रेंड्स टू दिस सेकेंड एंड और फाइनल डे ऑफ आवर हॉलीडे पार्टी आई होप यू इंजॉय द हॉलीडेज एंड यू इंजॉय द रेस्ट ऑफ द हॉलीडेज ऑल्सो आई एम ग्लैड आई वॉज एबल टू शेयर सब जोक्स विद यू बट द फर्स्ट स्टोरी आई हर्ड अबाउट अ पेरेंट वॉज दैट देर यूज टू बी ए मर्चेंट हु यूज टू ट्रेवल फ्रॉम इंडिया टू एफ्रीका एंड every time he went to do some business he would do import export business to carry some goods from india and exchange them and bring some other cashew nuts or something that were growing in africa so he was into that business but during one of his visits to africa he passed through a big forest a jungle and he saw a lot of parrots there he liked those parrots and he decided to take one home so he bought a cage and captured one of the parrots and put him in the cage and brought him back to india the parrot was very happy and this uh, merchant began to feed him with the most favorite thing that parrots like to eat if you are from india you would know the parrots love churi and mirch that is chilies and something soft to made out of wheat and uh, jaggery or something it's, it tastes good for the parrots i think you can all taste it and it's a favorite of the parrots so churi and chilies were served to the parrot parrot enjoyed he was living in that cage happy enjoying learned how to speak words learned how to sing so next year when the merchant was going back to africa he asked the parrot in his cage i am going back to your homeland do you have any message for the folks back home and the parrot said yes tell them i am enjoying my time in this cage i enjoy singing i eat churi and i eat chilies and i dance and sing and i'm very happy so the uh, the owner of the parrot said okay i will convey your message after finishing his work in africa he went back to the same forest and he said, gathered all the parrots he says come i got a message for you people from a parrot i took with me last year so they all gathered around him and he said my parrot in the cage he says he is enjoying his life in the cage he sings and dances and he eats churi and chili he's very happy on this one of the parrots an elderly one sitting on a branch near this man suddenly had tears in his eyes and he fell down dead he was very shocked this parrot must have been very close to the parrot i took with him so he said so It's a sad thing, but he came back and told the parrot in the cage that I conveyed your message that you are enjoying your life in the cage and you eat churi and chilies and you dance and sing. Everybody seemed to be okay with that except one elderly parrot who was sitting on the branch of the tree. And when I gave him this message, he had tears in his eyes and he fell down dead. On hearing this message, the parrot in the cage had tears in his eyes and he fell down dead. and the merchant was so sad if these parrots were so close to each other why should i have conveyed these messages anyway feeling sorry he took the dead bird out and threw it out said as soon as the bird was thrown out the parrot opened its wings and flew out and he said you aren't dead after all he said no neither is the elderly parrot dead there he just sent me a message for you and the message was if you want to get out of the cage die while living <laughs> and that's the spiritual message so that is where we started from the parrot jokes it is a very unique relationship it is it's not like any other relationship that we feel so connected with the master one of the big things that happens in relation with the master is that it comes from somewhere deeper in ourselves than any other relationship and if we don't know how our soul operates our soul is the deepest thing inside us the heart and the mind and the emotions and they are all outside of it but the soul is the deepest part of us and somehow when we come in contact with the master this our soul is touched and the master soul touches our soul which is pure love being exchanged it's a love which is so pure so different because it defies the definition that we have over here 
a master's love for us is so unconditional. It's difficult to believe it exists in this world. He never judges. He has not come here to say, are you good or bad? There are other agencies doing it. The whole law of karma is based upon that, good and bad. You do good, you are rewarded. You do bad, you are punished. Master don't come for that. I remember with very with great clarity a man who came to great master and he fell at his feet and he said, Master, forgive me. You told me not to eat meat. You told me not to drink alcohol. You told me be of a good moral character. I broke all these promises I made to you last night by being in bad company. We ate meat, we drank alcohol, we womanized, we did everything wrong according to your instructions. Please forgive me. The great master said, all right, you are forgiven. Don't do it again. He said, thank you, thank you, and he ran away. There were secretaries sitting next to the master. One was a retired judge. I remember one of the senior professor in a university. They were all people educated around the master. They said, Master, a man disobeyed you and did not follow any of your instructions. And he simply comes to you and he says, forgive me. And you say, I forgive you. Supposing he does the same things again and he comes to you, will you still forgive him? He said, he asked for forgiveness. I forgave him. And if he comes again to ask for forgiveness, I will forgive him. He said, Master, when will you punish him? He said, there are so many others punishing him. His own mind is punishing him. You should have seen how much his own mind has punished him before he came to me. Please don't put me into the category of punishers. Let me remain on the category of forgivers. Masters are always forgivers. It's an amazing experience that they have not come here to judge our situation in the life here. They know we are trapped. They know what we are going through certain karmas. They know our plight. They come with compassion. They come with utmost compassion and love. The purest love which is defied anything that we know here because it's totally unconditional. No judgment at all. These masters don't judge at all. And they are constantly taking care of us because their approach is we are souls trapped here and they have come to take us back home. They are continuously designing the best way to take us back home depending upon where we are, what body we have, where we are born, where we are living, what our karma is. They take that into account and find the best way to help us to go back to our true home. And that is why when you deal with them it's a very different feeling you get. And I am constantly reminded of my experiences with great masters, which you see here. Huzur Maharaj Baba Sawan Singh. I saw his love for everybody. And I saw, and yet, sometimes we can't understand how these masters express their love. Sometimes they can express it in a very unorthodox way. And that also I should relate to you. One of my experiences, the most traumatic experience of my life in relation to my master. Master was walking outside in the Dera and people had lined up on both sides. About eight or ten people were following the master. I was one of them. We were walking behind the master. And the others were people, his bodyguard, and uh, um, somebody, secretary, some follower, somebody who had to take him somewhere, just going for a walk. And people lined up in the Sevadar was very particular that nobody should come and come in the way of the master walking. So they made the road clear for him. And Sevadar were lining up on both sides. And people were behind them trying to have a glimpse of the master. And with folded hands, they were all standing. One elderly woman broke that cordon which was placed by the Sevadar, ran inside, 
and touch the feet of the master. So master had his cane with him. He took the cane and beat her. I am witness to that. The old lady being beaten up for what offense has she committed that she is paying respect to the master. She is expressing her devotion to the master and he beats her up. And I couldn't understand. I am telling you, I lost faith in the master. He cannot be a master who can get so angry that a woman is just breaking a little cordon to come and pay respects to him and he beats her up. And then I tried to look at his face. Is he having any remorse or something? He was smiling. I could follow him. I left him. I went to see what happened to the lady. And since Sevadas took her away, she was sitting on a platform on the side. The, many people rushed to see her. I also rushed. I left the master. I said, first time I've discovered he can't be a master. He's uh, so angry. And then he's not... Uh, feeling any regret over what he did. So I went and that lady, old lady was beaming with smiles. She said, in one second, the master has taken away all my karma. I am the luckiest of all. I couldn't believe that such a thing would happen in this particular way. Nobody can understand that a master can do something which looks so different to us. And actually, it was of a benefit to her. She was a changed woman from that moment. And I followed up on that to understand that one can never know how, what one needs, what one, had, what one gets, how one gets. Of course, when I told this story uh, in the United States when I first came, in the 60s, I happened to tell this story to a group of satsangis because I told them there are some things that happen which completely shake our faith in the master. Till we learn something more later. When I told this story, I, I didn't have this kind of a cane I have now, which is like master's cane. I have this small thing with me in my hand. They all came, please beat us. <laughs> I said, what kind of message am I giving? <laughs> Now, uh, being beaten is not a great thing. <laughs> but just because we don't understand that this is what happened. So sometimes the masters can, she got uh, with a stick, but sometimes the masters can with a little, little slap on the wrist, but with love. Never forget, everything a master does is with love. Because he's love personified. There is nothing else in that master. If there is not love, there is nothing else in the master. So that is why when I heard these songs today, it brought to my memory the great moments that we have experienced with great master, Baba Saman Singh, whose love was so deep and so great that it beat all records. And that's why we understand what a perfect living master is like an ordinary human being but absolutely extraordinary in what he knows and what he's doing. Absolutely extraordinary. He's just wrapping up the totality of consciousness, wrapping up the creator, God himself, in a human body. That's what a perfect living master is. It's very difficult to understand. But that is why we have to verify these kind of statements and verify these findings we get through meditation. Meditation is a good thing because it, it's a validation of things that we learn. Uh, it does not mean that uh, if a master accepts you, he's going to judge whether you are qualified to go back to true home or not. If he has said you will, you will. The rest of it, we are too much involved in things here. We can't understand the value of what the master says, I accept you. We don't understand the value of it. It's a deal, done. It's a completely... Done deal. But to validate, really, did he mean it? Did, will it really happen? We meditate and find out by going within. And the further we go, the greater our amazement at who the master is. We look upon the master 
as a human being, maybe an enlightened human being, one who has had great experiences. That's what we think of a master. The master has done what we are supposed to be doing and he's an example for us. That's what we think. We meditate and we see him inside. And we say, yes, it's good that we can have a contact with him inside and outside. While he's alive, both contacts look very good. Sometimes the mind doubts if the inside is real. Outside is real. Our whole reality is outside. In the physical plane, our reality continues to be outside. When we meditate in the body, we still think there's something happening in this body. It's very difficult to even know that an inner body is generating this experience of a physical body. We think physical body is real, inside we have an experience of something. So that's how we proceed. When we see the inner master, it's good that we have been able to have somebody, the same master, real master outside, also appears inside. The truth is the other way around. The real master inside appears outside. And we take it the other way around. Because we are taking the outside reality. Then we go to the master and he takes us. And if we are curious people, I am very curious. I was right from the beginning. I was curious in exploring what's inside. I was not in a hurry to go back to true home. I said, I have enough time. If you go with the master inside, you will find that how the great realms of creation, physical world, several physical worlds, is not the only physical world. There's so many you can travel to other physical worlds through meditation. You see that what we talk of, are there aliens, are there galaxies having any other planets like our, a different kind of lifestyle, different kind of bodies. Yes, they all exist. And one, can, one can't travel in the physical body like that, but you can travel internally. Master shows you those if you're curious and interested. He makes the journey very interesting. And when you find that there are souls who are ascended to rule over those regions. Just like we have in the physical world, governments that run territories we call countries or states. And the presidents and the heads and the kings and so on who have ruled here. Similarly, the other areas are also ruled by rulers. And when you see those rulers with great flourish, maintaining the whole universe, the entire universe, a big powerful position. They are also souls. With their good karma, they took that position. With their very good karma, we got human beings, they became rulers of the higher astral plane or one of the big planes. So when we see them and they look at our master who is with us like a friend, we both are traveling like tourists in an astral realm and go to the ruler, the ruler comes down to bow down to our master. And we say, what has happened? We were both seekers going up together as friends. And why the ruler giving so much respect to the master? And we are trying to be so good to the ruler. He's, he's, a, he's like a... We worship him today as God, by the way. Most religions are worshipping a God. God sitting in heaven is the ruler of that astral plane. We all think he's born the creator. He's the creator and sustainer of this universe. He follows all the descriptions. He, he is actually covered by all descriptions given by all religions about God. But he's the just head of the astral plane. And if God is giving that kind of obeisance to your master, it looks very strange. And then we say, what's going on? He says, you don't know who, who you are with. You don't know. We like to come back to human form in order to come to a person like him. It's a very strange experience. You can go still higher. And the universal mind and the creative powers there are also like rulers. Ultimately, when you go, you find that it is the master who we thought was a human being, enlightened human being, or more advanced human being, trying to guide us as a guide or something was the destination we were looking for, was our own totality, was our own true self, was such cunt, was, was the ultimate true home. Sitting here amongst us, it's very difficult to 
uh, understand, appreciate this here. So that is why meditation can help in validating all these things. And it's a personal validation. I have never believed in a second person validation. It doesn't work. Not for me and not for many other friends of mine. I want to have personal validation. Somebody else has seen something good. Good for that person. Not good for me. I, I won't disbelieve. That's another thing. That many people have their faith based upon this. We know this much. Nobody else can know more. So if you say I know more, no, I don't believe it. That's not correct. We don't know what the capacity of knowledge is so great. Capacity of higher awareness is so unlimited that we cannot judge what somebody else says. But we can say this much I have seen. This experience I have had. And therefore I can believe what my experience is. Rest I will believe when I see more. So this has always been my attitude. And by the way, this is the teaching of the great master. The great master says, in true spiritual practice, there is no scope for blind faith. Do not believe because somebody else says believe it. Do not believe on somebody else's experience, no matter how high. Believe your own experience. And when the potential is there, the capacity is there to have our own, own experience, why do we need to believe anybody else's experience? So that is why it's very important that we use meditation to validate. Validate for who? Do we need validation? Does the soul need validation? Not at all. It's only we are needing validation because we are identifying ourselves with our minds. The mind needs validation, not the soul. But when we think we are the mind, we need validation. Till we can cross the mind and discover that was just an instrument given to us. It was just a device given to us to explore a new experience through time and space. That's all. Here, no description is available. Our spiritual books are there in abundance. I look at the books and I say, how can they describe that? How can any lecture, how can any talk, how can any book, how can any thinking ever describe even Parabrahm with a soul in this? No way. Because our descriptions are limited to time and space. We can't get out of it. There's no potential in the mind for that. No capacity in the mind. So that is why the truth is there but can be validated by personal experience, by personally going into that state of being, where you discover how in a timeless, spaceless state, everything was contained right there. It can be actually your experience, your awareness. I don't even like to call experience because we have used the word experience in time and space. I say your awareness. I can't find right words. Always I'm short of words to describe something that's beyond. But anybody can get it and validate through meditation. Meditation is so simple. It's the art of withdrawing your attention from outside to within your own inside at a known place behind your eyes. What could be simpler than that? There's no complexity at all. You put yourself, we have got the capacity, we have imagination. Use that. Imagine you are inside. You close your eyes, there's a darkness inside. You know that you are operating within that darkness in the head. You can feel your head. You can feel your eyes in front. You can feel your ears. You can feel your body around you. So simple. And we are constantly operating from there. That's the third eye center. Starting point, the gateway. It's called the tenth door. To distinguish from the ninth door that opens outside, tenth door opens inside. The tenth door or the third eye center is behind the eyes. All we need to do is put attention there. If you put attention there, we draw attention from outside, you begin to open the door and discover what else exists in our consciousness. Not physical. In pure consciousness. In the ability to know and be aware. How much can you open up? And you can open up unlimited and go on and on and it's all within, within whatever form you are, because we are trying to reach the ultimate self. Even in the, in the human body, where we feel our self is located, just follow that. 
Now the only problems are our attachments, our lack of faith, our continuous belief, this is the only reality and that is why we are trapped here. If we are a little open for that, we will be able to find that. And of course, masters come here and they also help us in validation. Before they make it clear that they are taking us back home, they come for our seeking. Seeking of the soul is what is needed for a master to appear in our life. When the master appears, he guarantees, he takes us home. That's his job. The rest is all for the mind. Meditation, validation, everything for the mind. I hope you enjoyed this holiday. We'll have a break now, have a little snack or lunch, and I'll see you a little while again later.